YouTube channel. YouTube tuba like a tuba. How's it going? It's multiplier here. So let's do some knowledge. Have you ever heard of intersample peaks or intersample peak and not known what it meant? Or maybe you've seen a word true peak floating around in a, a limiting plugin such as this one or a mastering plugin. And you've seen true peak limiting or true peak normalization. And, and you've wondered, what does it mean? I can show you, I, I, I made a diagram. It's really good. This is a diagram I made to represent said principle of intersample peaks and or true peak. First of all, a principle. This is a an audio interface aka sound card. More accurately, it could be called a DAC for digital to analog converter. What you find is a digital file you're creating or even just playing off your computer. So digital, think digital, think dots, discrete values. You're creating a digital file, but then between the digital file and the speakers, it needs to be converted to analog. Now, in the case of one of these, it, it, it's quite a so it's a thing you can look at. You can you can see that the, the conversion is going to happen somewhere inside of this box. The digital information flies in through the USB cable, and then analog information comes out through the headphone port or the speaker holes. Outputs would be the technical term. So this converts digital to analog. It's really important. It's the heart of all this. Now, sometimes you might not be able to see this because it's built in. So in the case of your tele, so in the that there. So in the case of your telephone, it still has a DAC, a digital to analog converter, but it's all buried away and, and you, you, you can't see it. But it's in there, converting the digital file, the digital information into analog information that your headphones can pump into your ears. DAC, digital to analog conversion. Super important. And as I say, it is the heart of this entire idea. There. This diagram is a surprisingly accurate representation of this process. The blue dots that I drew in are the digital signal, the discrete bits of information you create when you're creating your file, dot, 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 and the waveform behind it is the analog waveform that gets created. Remember, this converts digital to analog, so coming in through, in this case, the USB cable will be the blue dots, the digital information, and what comes out through the headphone hole or the outputs will be this waveform, an analog signal. Remember, digital is discrete values, like dots, there, 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 and so on. Whereas an analog signal is a smooth, continuous signal. And so when you draw, well not draw, when you join up the dots effectively, converting digital to analog, it kind of flies above a bit, doesn't it? As it tries to draw all these dots together some little bits fly out the other end almost. These are called intersample peaks because they happen in between the sample. So intersample, in, in between the, the word is, doesn't make too much sense, but yes, intersample peaks because they happen in between the samples, peaks appear. Perfect, so they're the intersample peaks. What is true peak? Well, true peak is the, rewind, let's rewind a bit. What is digital peak? Digital peak is the maximum amplitude of the digital signal. So you can see, I did a cool little dotted bright green line. Lots of jazz hands, lots of fun. So pump, poke the screen. The green dotted line is the digital peak. In other words, the maximum amplitude between minus infinity and the, the top, which is the peaks you see on your DAW for the peak meters. How Ever, because of these intersample peaks, sometimes the analog peak is higher than this digital peak. I did the true peak, the analog peak, if you like, in this fun red color. I called it true peak, which is the technical name. And well, you can you can see what's going on here. The true peak, the analog resulting waveform from the digital signal, is higher than the digital peak. Is this a problem? Potentially. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Think about what this means. That means if you have a digital file completely maximized, maxed out to the max at zero, or just you've got your digital file and you've maxed it out to the very limit, 
Now, if there are some indecipherable peaks that create a true peak significantly higher than the digital peak, say three or four dB at a push, uh, normally a bit less, but some, sometimes it can be three or four dB higher than the digital peak. If you have these true peaks, if you have these indecipherable peaks significantly higher than the digital peak, then the playback system needs, ideally needs enough headroom to handle it. If say you've got everything turned down rather low, then true peaks don't matter because you've got all the headroom, loads, loads of headroom there. So if you're, if you're listening quite low, absolutely fine. Not a problem, not a problemo. But if say you're maxing it all out, you've turned it up to the very max, or maybe on your telephone, you've pressed all the buttons to the max or your laptop, you've or your DJ and you're running it into the red, maxing it, maxing it, maxing it, super much to the mega max, then potentially there's headroom built into the, the circuitry. It depends how they designed it, but maybe not. And either way it makes things a little bit unpredictable. And that's why, put that back. And that's why it's generally considered the thing to do, to do true peak limiting and not just normal limiting. Now, yes, lots of the biggest tracks in the world don't do true peak limiting and it hasn't stopped them being super fun, but all the experts, all the sciencey audio experts do recommend true peak limiting. So actually it's also, it's also a part of most broadcast standards as well, I think. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm not a broadcast standards expert, but I'm pretty sure true peak limiting and, and true peak normalization is a part of broadcast standards. So it's basically the thing to do because true peak is a much more useful thing to look at than digital peak. And so, yes, that's basically what it is. If you want to look for yourself, take a sample. Take normally, it's a most commonly seen on kick and snare sample. Snare, snare samples, but Snare, snare snap. It's most commonly seen on kick and snare samples, in particular ones that are maybe slightly di slightly distorted or maxed out with a just take a look at some maxed out kick and snare samples. Take a look at those in Ableton, and then as you zoom in, zoom all the way in, right into sample land, as Dead Mouse calls it, where you're where say that much on the screen might be one sample. So zoom all the way in, and if you see some peaks. Fly, like appearing, like rising up like mountains, like a volcano appearing. If you see some rising up above where it looks like digital peak was, then these will be into sample peaks. And that's because the Ableton waveforms, which I think they introduced the new ones 9.5 upwards or 9.1. Anyway, what, one of the versions of Ableton, they introduced these cool new, new waveforms. These waveforms are, are mathematically modeled off the analog waveforms that result after digital to audio conversion. So when you're looking at a Ableton waveform, you're not actually looking at the digital signal, you're looking at the analog resulting signal. Technically speaking, an approximation, but a mathematically accurate approximate, approximation. Approximation. So yes, built into Ableton, you can actually learn about this uh, digital to analog conversion and see which samples might give you problematic peaks and which might not. Knowledge, power. Multiplier, into sample peaks, true peak. My name has been Multiplier, and I will catch you guys. Chair squeaking on the. On the... Blows dust off things. Flippity flip.